Hey gang, it's Zippo. I've had this come up quite a bit uh, here in recent times and in the past as well. Um, people contacting me asking me why their Briggs & Stratton engine has an automotive type coil on it instead of using the stock magneto or magnetron type coil that uh, the engine was intended to use and how in the world it's possible that it works. Well, in theory all you've got to have is spark, fuel, and air to get an engine to start, in theory. So, you got to provide spark somehow. you got to provide spark at the right time. Ignition points help you do that. Beyond that, then you need something that packs a charge that can throw the charge to the spark plug, igniting the fuel that comes into the cylinder, into the combustion chamber. Either one of these methods work, and they work well. They're both tried, true, and tested since the dawn of the gasoline slash kerosene slash petrol type engines. Uh, used to use old uh, Wico uh, spark boxes to run hit miss engines. Um, they created their own spark. They ran on a governor system on a hit miss. Engine would get down to a certain point, boom, governor arm would drop, hit that mag, the mag would charge throw a spark to the spark plug, ignite the cylinder, get your uh, engine RPMs back up to where they need to be, so on and so forth. The reason that some engines, Briggs and Stratton uh, in particular, why Briggs and Stratton engines get swapped from the coil, the internal mag operated coil to the external battery coil, because a lot of times people think that that's where the problem lies. Most of the time it's not. Um, a lot of times it's just a simple cleaning that needs to be done to the flywheel or the gap uh, has somehow increased jarring the engine has caused the gap between the mag and the flywheel to uh, increase to the point where you're not getting an effective spark to ignite the fuel any number of variables come into play so what people do they take the automotive type coil they attach it to the points which open and close at the time that the engine needs to have the spark. They hook the other side of the coil up to the battery and they've got their spark back, they've got their engine back up and running, they're off into the races. The only drawback to a battery ignition, battery coil, is you've got to have a battery. You have to have a charge to provide for this type of coil. This type creates its own it's a standalone. It uses the magnets on the flywheel to draw a charge through it and throw that charge to the spark plug. Oftentimes, like I say, it's a matter of just needing to clean the flywheel, clean the surface of your coil pack, gap them correctly, put it back together, make sure that your points are clean and properly adjusted, and if the coil is okay, you're going to get spark, you're going to get fire, your engine's going to run. So, to show you what uh, everything looks like assembled, this particular five horse engine, the points are underneath the flywheel, so the wire for the coil comes out from behind the flywheel. That's why you only see one wire here, the one wire going up to the spark plug. But, the premise is when need be, those points will close. When those points close, the magnet will pass the coil. When the magnet passes the coil, it throws a spark, throws a charge to the spark plug. The spark plug body is grounded. The, the diode is not. The two make a contact by breach. The breach is the hot blue spark that ignites the fuel that starts and runs the engine. So if you do run into a situation where your coil is a battery type coil on a Briggs and Stratton engine and you want to go back to the original configuration you may have to dig into the engine a little bit nothing to be afraid of easy to do pull things apart look up my proper installation of a, a coil slash magneto slash magnetron show you how to properly gap it to the flywheel also 
I've got uh, installing and adjusting points. Although different on different types of Briggs engines, the premise is all the same. You start at 20 thousandths. Work to get your hottest spark. You may have to move two or from plus or minus two to uh, one to two thousandths to get your hottest spark. So that's a pretty short video to the point. I've had a couple of people come at me with it. Uh, Tony's one and uh, another uh, uh, and a gentleman. I'm, I'm sorry his, his uh, screen name on YouTube uh, is escaping me at the moment, but um, he's got a Kohler ignition system running a battery ignition. Uh, but there you have it. There's a difference between the two. That's why sometimes you will find a battery ignition on a Briggs & Stratton engine that is supposed to be a mag ignition using a magnet. If any of you guys have any questions, comments, want to see a video on something else pertaining to the electrical system of a standalone engine or uh, anything else pertaining to the tractors or some other videos that I have posted, please do feel free to contact me. Um, I'm lagging a little bit. I've got over 2,000 subscribers. It's sometimes hard to keep up and keep everybody happy all the time as far as getting to their emails promptly. Uh, for those of you, I apologize. Uh, for those that I do get to soon enough, I am glad that I can hopefully help. If I can't help, I'll try to point you in the direction of uh, a video or uh, somebody that can help you. Now, this is Zippo. Later. I'm out.